In the 1980s, your hairstyle was in uncharted waters. You should have locked your wardrobe and thrown away that key, but you could be forgiven any crimes against fashion if you drove one of these. Peugeot's answer to the hot hatch phenomenon that gathered so much momentum in the decade of turbo hair dryers and synthesizers. This is the Peugeot 205 GTI. In the 80s, it was perfectly acceptable to take the average modest family hatchback, add some horsepowers, some wide wheel arch extensions, and some red badges. And you know what? It still is. The 205 GTI is arguably the hot hatch. A real pocket rocket with a choice of either 1.6 or 1.9 litre engines and a body shell that weighed roughly the same as the average family Labrador. Well, Labradors still weigh broadly the same, and the same rule can apply to the 205 GTI. It still cuts it against modern hot hatches, but has the car that captured the imagination of people all over the world in 1983 when it was launched 30 years ago, now become a part of the 80s that some people would rather leave there. If you're one of those people, you're wrong. Here's what you've forgotten. Let's be clear about something. This is an 80s sports car, and the cabin doesn't let you forget that fact either. Body-hugging sports seats, big red GTI badge staring back at you from the centre of the steering wheel, loads of extra dials telling you what the engine's doing, and uh, good for man bingo, down the pub as well. But there is one small problem, and I say small for a reason. The pedals in here are perfectly spaced for those heel and toe gear changes when you're pushing on. However, should a stray goat walk out in the road in front of you, braking quickly could become emotional, unless you have the feet of a 10 year old. So the pedals are too close together and the gear change is about as satisfying as milking a badger. But all in all the 205 GTI is a good place to be sat. There's even room for the family. But that's not why you buy a Peugeot 205 GTI in these times of austerity, conservatism and uh, emissions rules. This is. power, immediate response from things like the steering, the brakes, the loud pedal. You know the Peugeot 205 GTI comes from a time when cars did what you wanted them to do when you wanted them to do it. Sure it's not as fast as most new hot hatches, it's not as easy to drive, it's not as refined, but it's a lot more fun. Driving a Peugeot 205 GTI in the 80s was all about image. But don't even consider one if that's your intention now. Times have changed. The majority of people who see you driving the car will feel sorry for you or wave their arms angrily as you leave them in a cloud of 80s French perfume from a time when the smell of the exhaust was all just part of the motoring experience. These cars still look great on the road though and use that hot hatch power to full effect and you'll be left with a coat hanger grin too. Even now, go to any club race, rally, or even a track day, and the Peugeot 205 still rules the roost. That's because the GTI is such a good, fun, chuckable, and very capable car. And that's without mentioning the biggest 205 GTI cliche of them all. It involves driving really fast, going around a corner, and getting off the power. And if you're not very well versed in these things, it can result in a sticky seat. Say no more. So it is still possible to enjoy an 80s hot hatch like the 205 GTI right here in 2013. You don't need the hairstyles, you don't even need the fashion sense. And have you seen what the kids are wearing now? Just take a moment, just a second, and reflect on everything that was good about the 1980s. It's all represented right here in this little French hatchback. You know, the marketing slogan, when the car was first launched, back in the mid-80s, went something like, if you want something sensible, buy an anorak. Of course, in the 80s, no one wanted to be considered sensible. I can't help but think, though, now, you'd probably just sell more anoraks.